it was just kind of a special moment because I, I think it it showed them that if you're enjoying this music now, no matter where life takes you, you can always keep that with you and that oral camaraderie with you. Yeah. So it was a really fun experience. Bienvenue. Welcome to Coffee Talk with King Francois Premier, where we will discover the tales, trials, and talents of Renaissance Festival performers, merchants, and diehard attendees as we journey by way of lighthearted and even at times heartwarming conversations about the Renaissance Festival world. I am your host, Theodore Jander, a.k.a. King Francois Premier. Bonjour. Welcome to Coffee Talk with King Francois Premier, episode 30. I am your host, Theodore Jander. On one of my recent deliveries for my side gig, it occurred to me that the short chat segments shared in the podcast episodes where I highlighted upcoming Renaissance festivals may not be heard as much. This thought came about as I realized those specific installments are time-specific, meaning the dates and such provided are for 2023. Therefore, there really is not much of a reason for folks to listen to those episodes. So, to bring more light to the stories shared in the aforementioned occasions, I bring you the short chat segments, Compilation 1. In this brief episode, you will hear the stories shared by three previous guests featured in the short chat segments I just described. The individuals are Brent Jones, Anne Heyer Brown, and Kirsten Collier. The question leading into their responses went thusly. I myself have experienced numerous and memorable encounters with patrons, staff, cast, guest performers, artisans, and merchants. So as a performer at a Renaissance festival, what is one of your favorite memories you would like to share with my listeners and me? However, I did include Anne's response to the question about her favorite coffee shop, as it ties in nicely with Kirsten's character. Plus, I couldn't pass up a chance to again share Anne's contagious and delightful laugh. But before we hear their tales, some winter-related coffee humor to start things brewing. I was drinking coffee in my snow boots this morning when I thought to myself, I really need to procure a mug. (laughs) With that bit of Java jocularity, Grab a cup of your favorite brew, sit back, and enjoy this episode of Coffee Talk with King Francois Premier. I perform with the Greenleaf Singers, an a cappella madrigal music group that we perform at around St. Louis and at the St. Louis Renaissance Festival. And I guess one of my one of my favorite memories is from just a few years ago. Uh, We were singing, and a gentleman came up and was taking some pictures on his cell phone. And this isn't uncommon by any means. We experience this every day that we sing at the fair. Only this person had a flip phone with a tiny camera. And the mental whiplash I got from thinking about the time periods involved in this situation we were in... Uh, were just sort of amusing and thinking of, you know, it is the uh, late 2010s and iPhones and other smartphones with really great cameras are ubiquitous. And this phone is from a decade or so ago, and they're using it to take pictures of us, a group who is singing music uh, from the Renaissance and just sort of all those different time periods being mixed together was just a really fun memory that that tickles me every time it pops back into my head. On a more serious note, I think the memory that I really enjoy coming back to is seeing people hear us for the first time. We are sort of a background music type group. We don't tend to 
perform in places where we'll get 30 or 50 people to sit down for an hour and listen to us sing. It's more people sort of filtering by and we just provide a nice atmosphere. And a side effect of that is we get people uh, moving toward us from far away and you can kind of see it when they get to a point, point where they can hear us. And it's just really fun to watch them, uh, to watch that hit them, to, to have them recognize, oh, that sound is not coming from speakers. That's coming from those people over there. And it happens at all ages. So you'll see toddlers or babies be absolutely enthralled. Uh, they'll turn their heads to watch us as they're being wheeled by by their parents who might be oblivious to what's happening. You'll see it from high school students who sort of give a look of, of recognition and sometimes even sing along or mouth the lyrics uh, because, oh, this is a song we're singing in our madrigal group right now. And from older folks as well who may have heard some of this music before, but to see them uh, realize, oh, that's that's being performed live, um, that that all of those harmonies are coming from those people's voices and that's it. And just sort of seeing that happen for people as they get closer to us and, and get within our range is just a really fun thing that happens. And luckily for us, we get to experience that um, year after year and make more of those memories every year we're there. So that's a, that's a really nice thing. And that's just one thing that I, that always, um, that always comes back to me when I think of, of singing at the fair. It's, it's the, the recognition on people's faces when they, when they first hear us and think, oh, oh, that's something different. Tell us about your favorite coffee shop. Where is it located and what makes it your favorite coffee shop? What do you like about it? So I have two um, and there's a theme with them. They both have bees as in like honeybees in their name. So the first one is called the Clover and the Bee. It is in Webster Groves and it is a great little brunch place. And they have one of those wonderful like European can do it all coffee machines and they just make all kinds of beautiful coffee drinks and they'll do like a terrific latte, Americano, what have you. And those great, big, wonderful coffee house, oh, mm -hmm. huge, like soup bowl mm -hmm. type mugs that are just great. It's also a terrific brunch place. It's, it's a place that I've actually brought out of town guests. Clover okay. and the Bee, give it a try. They actually do have a little walk up window, too, if you're just wanting coffee Sweet. and like a pastry or something. Cool. The other place I like is actually in Kirkwood and they have limited hours and they are called Honey Bees Biscuits and Good Eats. And in addition to their delicious biscuits and biscuit sandwiches, they do really good coffee drinks and they're all based on like bee names. It is really cute. And again, that's a place where you can get more kind of your fix of that delicious, super sweet, almost more like a, <laughs> almost more like a milkshake oh, yeah. coffee drink, iced coffees, just terrific. You'll see a line just out the door um, on the weekends because the place is really popular. Okay. So yeah. So they're, places. I guess it's safe to say that they're, they're both the place to be. Yeah. Oh, oh yes. All oh, right. well done. Yes. 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 <laughs> yeah. Just takes a hive mind, really. <laughs> <laughs> the follow up. The yes. follow up is great. All right. Yeah. So, as a part of Greenleaf Singers, it's been great to perform at Fair, not just for our sets that are kind of like our here's our group and we're in performance mode, but also kind of walking around to various friends of ours at Fair mm -hmm. and singing with them because a lot of them know our repertoire. And a couple of years ago, this was pre-pandemic, there was a um, high school group, medical group, that actually came to visit Fair oh, yeah. um, in the fall. And we noticed them <laughs> and they were over by the entrance singing a couple songs. And we, we got to talking with these kids and I just saw myself in them because mm -hmm. that's what I did nice. in high school. And in those days, we didn't have the fair in St. Louis. So we we did a bus out to Kansas City oh, okay, um, yeah. to their fair. So I think a lot of us in Greenleaf really saw ourselves in those kids. And so 
we were able to sing a couple songs for them. They sang a couple of their songs for us. And then we all sang together. I think we did sing We Enchant It with them. And it was so much fun. But again, it was it was one of those things where I think (laughs) we could kind of show them like, hey, you can continue with this kind of music throughout your life. And it was just kind of a special moment because I, I think it it showed them that if you're enjoying this music now, no matter where life takes you, you can always keep that with you and that choral camaraderie with you. Yeah. So it was a really fun experience. Sweet. I would think, too, that not only with the singing aspect, you provided an opportunity for them to see that, hey, it's OK as grownups to still be dressing up and having fun 100%. and though i think anybody who goes to renaissance festival is going to experience <laughs> that anyway because yeah. there are a lot of people who yeah. dress up and and not necessarily just renaissance so we have you're that, exactly that, right that whole gambit but one definitely. of the best things yeah. about renaissance fair and i tell people even if they think it's not their thing the people watching is excellent <laughs> you know yes. it's wonderful just kind of interacting with the characters the royal court obviously mm-hmm. is wonderful it's great to see kids kind of get that experience of knighting and princessing and all those wonderful experiences with the animals and the petting zoo and the music and the entertainment it's it's super exciting i've told a lot of people about it like even if you don't think it's your thing come out and check it out and have fun for a day and there's something for everybody yeah absolutely absolutely so just a couple bits of information kirsten is what we would call a newbie on the cast for the st louis renaissance festival and she is part of the fae and her character is honey and so if you can guess she is a bee-oriented fae. So her coloring, etc. Is that correct? That is, yes. Oh, outstanding. Even though we have just completed this second weekend, we already have a wonderful memory I would imagine that you would like to share with my listeners and me. Oh yes, very much so. So my favorite, most memorable moment. So a few, a few things to know about me is I'm going to school to be an interpreter like for the deaf and like hard of hearing and sign language and all that fun stuff. Sweet. And so um, we had a deaf woman come to the fairy realm and I was about to lay down for a little fairy nap. (laughs) And um, the other fairies were like, honey, 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 she's deaf. And so I like ran over to her and I tapped her on the arm and I was like, are you deaf? And she's like, yes, I'm deaf. And then I told her that I was a, um, I was learning, I was a student to become an interpreter. And she, we had an entire conversation about like, there's, it's a deaf culture thing where it's like, like, where are you learning? Why are you learning? Mm -hmm. Um, what year are you? Like, there's lots of things that you talk about when you first meet someone and they're deaf and you like, it's, it's a whole thing. And so, um, it was just very cool because I got to use what I'm learning, like in the real world. Well, real world in the fairy world, whatever. And so I would say then, with that interaction, you as a cast member had a way of communicating with her that no one else maybe would have been able to then creating and having a unique experience with a patron who will probably remember that a fairy dressed as a honeybee was able to talk to me. Yeah, it was very cool. She was very excited that I could sign. She was she was very excited. She kept telling me how happy that I could sign. And I asked her if there was an interpreter for her, and she was like, no, there's not. And she was trying to get her friends to come, but there's no interpreters here. Oof. So I was like, well, we have we I think we have a deaf weekend, and then I think we do. Yeah, we I, mm, October yeah. 14th, 16th. 14th, 15th, 15th yes. 16th, something like something that. Something like that. Yes. But yeah. Oh, cool. I would like to express my gratitude to Brent, Anne, and Kirsten for sharing their stories. I hope you enjoyed revisiting our chats as much as I did. As conversations continue in and outside of this podcast, I learn more and more about the importance of investing in the stories of others. And I realize how blessed I am to share them with each of you, my listeners. That said, be on the lookout for the next installment of Coffee Talk with King Francois Premier. If you are a performer, 
artisan, merchant, staff, or diehard patron in or of the Renaissance Festival world and would like to be featured on Coffee Talk with King Francois Premier, reach out to me by way of clicking on the following link provided in the show notes. www.theodorejander.com slash coffee talk podcast. Would you like to receive early access to each new episode as well as receive a behind-the-scenes glimpse into the production and creative process for the podcast? If so, join the wonderful community of listeners supporting the show and making new things possible through Patreon. Learn more at www.patreon.com slash coffee talk with King Francois. Thank you so much for tuning in to Coffee Talk with King Francois Premier. Abiento, see you soon, ciao for now, and au revoir.